Today on Houston Life, looking to get away, we have a look at a safe island vacation that is something for everyone in your family. And we'll chat with the Navy SEAL turned novelist whose books are getting the Hollywood treatment thanks to Chris Pratt. Plus, if you're looking for a way to keep your kids busy this summer, a literacy-based sensory box that's making learning fun for kids and easy for parents. And we are exploring Asian culture and heritage through dance with the Dance of Asian America Academy. All that and more have today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Oh, happy Monday, everyone. Look at Texo. He's got the major case of the Mondays. Can you believe it's already May 17th? I said that today, Courtney. I said, oh my gosh, where did the first half of May go? I know, it's over. I Almost know. done. Of course, I'm Courtney Zavala. Lauren Kelly is here for Derek today. It's so good to have you at the desk today. You too. It makes my Monday a lot brighter when Aww. I'm here with you, Courtney. Mine too, Lauren. Aww. You're wearing my favorite color, leopard. It matches everything, right? I love it. <laughs> well, maybe one of the reasons why everybody's just kind of got a case of the Mondays, besides the weather, besides the fact that it's Monday, but today's also tax day. day. Mm, maybe I should thank my accountant, my mom, for doing my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to the experts, Lauren Kelly, as I like to say. No, exactly what they. <laughs> it's confusing, those tax laws, but all of that and more, you need to make sure that you get that postmarked or click your button if you're doing it online uh, by 11.59. Of course, different postmark day, uh, times, depending on what your pickup time is at your post office. But check that. Get it in the mail if you haven't done so. How was your weekend? You know, it was really great, aside from yesterday's torrential downpour. Yes. I did end up going on Saturday to the Eric Sewell Golf Foundation oh, Tournament, which was so lovely. And when I tell you, um, everybody that saw the segment was so happy that they finally just got the word out there. And they were able to raise over $75,000 to report to each of their charities and each of their foundations. So, that is really, yeah. really incredible. I and was really excited. Helping get the word out. Out. And of course, the money goes to benefit. Three different benefits. He's got his own charity at the University of Texas. They have uh, a suicide prevention and, of course, a Crohn's and Colitis Foundation as well. So all three of those will get significant amounts. Absolutely. Looks yeah. like the rain held off just enough. Just in time for Saturday. the golf day. What about you? I love that. Well, I had a little bit of a girlfriend catch up on Friday, but Saturday we had a date night with our friends and we headed over to one of your favorite spots. Where? The Improv Houston. I love that. Oh, I know who was there. <gasps> Whitney Courtney. Cummings. We were able to see her. It was a packed house. Unbelievable. She is so funny. Um, she talked to, and you know, at the end of the show, just like when I saw Michael Yo mm -hmm. at Improv, it, a fantastic venue. They are so wonderful, start to finish. She took a picture with anybody <laughs> that wanted. She just stayed up on stage. Aww. Everybody got a chance. Look, there we are. That finally. is so she awesome. She wasn't looking at her camera there. <laughs> and then my friend Allie kind of stepped out of the way for the next photo. Right. And I got a blurry one of her looking at my, there we go. Oh, it's that's blurry. awesome. And she changed her hair color. So when she walked out, it was sort of this like bluish, blonde, pinky type color, but okay. totally fit her, sassy. And she talked about how the last time she was here in Houston, she was newly engaged. And then she held up her hand and said, not anymore. So oh. she talked about that and then talked about <laughs> dating a younger guy. Hashtag and, relatable. Yeah, so I mean, it was so funny. We love Whitney Cummings. And next time you're, if she's in town again, she's on this sort of Texas tour right now. Definitely go see her. She is a absolute Hoot. And that really speaks m miles when somebody is that funny in person as well. And they don't have, comedians don't use a script. Right. So they're just using their knowledge and they're telling a story that happens to be hilarious. And the energy in the room. So you think about all the stuff that a lot of these comedians have done, of course, during the pandemic over Zoom and right. different things. And it's like, uh, yeah. Is anybody laughing? laughing? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but she was great. Absolutely lovely. And we love the uh, Houston Improv. And it's just a wonderful venue. So yes. go out and support that, too. I'm so glad that local you business. Went. I know mm -hmm. that you love that. For sure. Uh, hey, listen, for all our sports fans, I hope, and football fans, I hope you were able to catch this game last night. Because we have a big congratulations, of course, to Sam Houston State. The Bearcats. Eat them up. Eat them up. <laughs> they won their very first FCS National Championship. 
I mean, this is really incredible. If you watch the game, I was watching it yesterday. With Within like 40 seconds left of the game, they were down three. They were able to score. Uh, and come ahead, and it's they like defeated the number one seed, South Dakota State, 23 to 21. It's the nail biter game, you know. It's like the nail biter game. But I have to say, our sports director Randy McAvoy had had brought us this jersey, yes. which is super cool. Well, uh, and they he's said a Bearcat, it's, right? He is. Uh, but he, this is not his. No. He just owns it. They sent it to him. So exactly. This is honor that was the, 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 the jersey that right. they wore in the tournament. Not so cool. One, but it looks just like that. Yeah. Very um, cool. And a few alumni in our control room right now. Mm -hmm. We have producer Heather, director Chris, and Car Clarissa, all three of them in the control room. I don't know where their camera is because normally <laughs> they come up during a commercial break. But. But they're just going to be standing over. <laughs> we know that they're in there. They're just they're just eating them up. They're just eating them up all day. <laughs> it's so awesome. Congratulations. I love that story. It was a great game. For so. sure. I love the local angle. And I love this story, too. There's a place where you can actually get paid to nap. Sign me up. I know. I don't need to read anything else. <laughs> Sleep Health Company each night is hiring nap reviewers, and they're paying Get this, $1,500 for taking a nap every day for 30 days. What? Now What's you, the catch? Okay, yeah. You will have to review your sleep time and take part in experiments that, what does that mean? I don't know, I don't know, that they test theories like best nap duration and effects of napping on fatigue. And you can apply on each night's website. Applications close on May 31st, but you gotta be at least 18, year old, uh, 18 years old to apply. Uh, again, the, the testing, I, I don't know. But I mean, they probably just took up those little weird things. The probes. The probes on your head. Listen, Lauren, we are eight, we are above 18 years old. Just so barely though. We can totally apply and you used to do early mornings. Uh -huh. So did you have like a sweet spot for your napping? Oh, did you ever nap? Exactly when Houston Life aired. I, I would nap talk. at one o'clock. Thanks for your support. I, <laughs> <laughs> I would give you guys the trim report that I had for the day, and then it's like, okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I didn't have you? a time, but I had a duration. So anything longer than like 20 minutes, actually my sweet spot was about 17. Yep. Yep. Anything longer than 20 minutes, I was done. I couldn't fall asleep later because you know, waking up at two o'clock in the morning to go to work. Oh, is like it's a horrible. weird, bizarre thing. Yeah. And there are still times now when I wake up at that hour. Yeah. Uh, whatever, and I'll turn over and look at the clock, and I think, oh, oh god, yeah. I still have 15 like minutes, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I haven't done that shift. In, in years, mm -hmm. but I, it's st I still have oh, that yeah. in my stomach. It still it's hits me like a up pit. in your conscious. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, I'm ready to get paid for napping anytime. <laughs> you know what's <laughs> crazy? <laughs> on Saturday, I actually, you know what, Lauren Kelly? What? I took a two-hour nap on Saturday. I just remembered this. I was so tired. We had early baseball games. It yeah. was crazy. I don't remember. I do not remember the last time I napped. For I don't two remember. Hours? Two That's hours. Two like hours. Half a whole night's sleep. That's a long time. Were you able to go to sleep at a normal time later that oh, night yeah. or up? Yeah. Like, no, I was fine. Anyway. We went to the improv, so I oh, was right. fine. Had a glass of wine. Yeah. Know. But I was fine. But it yeah. was like the weirdest thing. I don't remember the last time I took a nap. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, I you, I when you have kids, you know, you have to make sure that your kids are not unbusy. I know. Like well, they're not watched. babies anymore. Right, right, you know? right, right. Although I do remember this, y'all. I was napping during the morning, like after that morning show and Orlando must have taken Connor to a birthday party uh -huh. and AJ's room's upstairs and I, somebody came over and rang the doorbell incessantly just Why? ringing the doorbell Why? and I thought, I'm just going to lay here. I'm not going to get up. I'm not gonna... <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear the beep, 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 beep. Oh, hi, Domino. And Andrew had climbed out of his crib. It was a toddler oh. crib. Opened the gate at the top of the stairs, walked down the stairs, unlocked the door, and opened the door. Oh. <laughs> and I mean, I shot out of bed. Oh, yeah. Like, he's yeah. like in his footy pajamas. I'm wide awake now. the door. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> that's why I didn't nap forever. Right. Right. Now I'm catching up on all the napping. OK, uh, this might be a personal question. OK. And feel free to lie. Ooh. Do you have any tattoos? Besides my microbladed eyebrows now. No. Oh, me too. Yeah, that's technically a tattoo on your it face. It is. Right? Yeah, it's the hardcore so, tattoo on your face. I've always wanted a tattoo. I went with a group of girls in college to get a tattoo. I was going to get the Tweety Bird. It was going to oh, end right. up on the thigh. It was right. like a whole thing. I would have had that if I would have gone first. But I saw the pain and what was happening with the girl that went first. And I was like, mm, uh -uh. I'm out. Not going to do it. <laughs> well, listen to this. If you want to test the waters, there's something called a semi-permanent tattoo. Okay, wait, what, what? I don't know. So I, that's what I think. It, I think 
of it something like a microblading right. eyebrow type thing, yeah. okay? So it's going to disappear in about nine to 15 months. So if oh. you, it's like tattoo ink. Now, our eyebrows don't disappear. Right, right, right. So it is semi-permanent because it's only going through like certain the layers top of the skin, Yeah, and right? it, but it tends to fade. So it I can fade. see what that would consist of if it's a semi-permanent. They kind of describe your eyebrows like that. Yeah, so yeah. what we're hearing is that this is <gasps> real tattoo ink. The artist used the same equipment and it's just made to fade. Um, the ink is made quicker. to fade quicker. So if you're wow. kind of like, mm, mm. I'm going to test it out, maybe have it for a year. I don't know. We, we have a do. full article on Allure.com okay. uh, to kind of test this whole thing okay. out. But wow, I'm definitely mm. not going to test it out with the Tweety Bird on the thigh. No. <laughs> I don't want to buy one Those of Those days are gone. First you know one what I mean? to test it out. <laughs> Well, Seriously. I do. Can you imagine me explaining that to my kids? <laughs> well, there was this really bad decision that I made when I was 19. No, <laughs> and you can't do that. No. <laughs> really quickly, though, before we wrap this up, I want to talk about Miss Universe. Because yes. every year since I was little, I always watch pageants with my grandmother. But Miss Universe returned to the stage last night and crowned a new winner. Check this out. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico is right. Miss Mexico, Andrea Mesa, beat out 73 other women. She's a model and a makeup artist. You don't say. Look she's at her gorgeous beautiful. face. She's got a degree in software engineering, and she's also an activist and works with Municipal Institute for Women, helping to end gender-based violence. Miss Brazil was the runner-up, and Miss Peru was second runner-up. Oh, I my just, gosh. I kind of miss, you know, during COVID times, right? We, they're standing like, separate, like this. Separate, right, really far. You know, yeah, not yeah. the group hug, but yeah. it all looked great. Congratulations to her. Did she's, you ever know the beauty queen wave? Kiss, uh, kiss, kiss, wrist, wrist, elbow, elbow. That was it. Okay, I'm going to work on that during I'll the commercial break. You. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I feel like I haven't lived at all. <laughs> I need to get up on that. Okay. All right, guys. Besides that <laughs> spectacular way, still to come, the things that we did as kids that we would never let our kids do. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the list, list is so very long. long. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, let's check in with Joe Sam, who is learning some cultural dances this afternoon. Hey, Joe. Hey, Lauren and Courtney. Yeah, we're doing exactly that as we continue to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. We're doing that at the DAA Academy Dance of Asian America. You can see these beautiful ladies. They have their costumes on. They're posed out. They're going to be giving us a special performance later on in the show when we come back and also sharing us with us all about culture and tradition that they have incorporated within their special dances. Peace to Life is back in just two minutes. <laughs> Okay, guys, BuzzFeed is trending with the things everyone thought were completely normal in high school that definitely weren't. Mm. These are, you know, like when we were kids, right? right? Some right. of the things that made the list, you know, I love this conversation, too, because it's sort of like kids these days. <laughs> they got <laughs> it so yeah. easy, you know? <laughs> yeah. So school, this is one of them from okay. the list, and it says school used to start before 9 a.m., and I actually went. Yes. 7.30 bell, right? Homeroom, all of that, I for know. sure. Now it's like 8-something. <laughs> I mean, two kids, you think I would know the start time. It's very confusing to keep track of both. Um, one person says, I spent 11 years asking to go to the restroom and actually being told no. Can you imagine? I know. It yeah. happened. Uh, yeah. And then high school had us drinking milk with hamburgers at 11 a.m. <laughs> Solid lunchtime. <laughs> the other thing is, too, like, I remember driving in my mom's car. Number one, remember, like, no seatbelts. Oh, Nobody yeah. Nobody wore a seatbelt. Yeah. But the other thing was there was this spot in the back of the car where the back window was. It was like a ledge. I laid in that. <laughs> I was While asleep the car was moving? in that. Not while the car was moving. Yes. Yes? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That's some, that's some and, good nostalgia you know, right Also, there. just, like, come back when it's dark. Oh, right, yeah. I'd never say that to me. For the dinner today. bell. Yeah. Uh -uh. Never. Uh -uh. Never, never. What uh -uh. about you? <sighs> my parents would just drop us off at Astroworld for the day, right? How just old were you? Probably 14. Oh. <gasps> Like really? eighth grade, ninth grade? Yeah, I know. And now 15? we are not sending our kids out alone. No, I'm a hover <laughs> aunt. I couldn't imagine being a mother. I'm a hover aunt. Uh -huh. So like I hover over my nieces and nephews like they were mine. And I'm like, no, you can't eat the raw cookie dough. Like I it's know. bad. Or how about just going over to somebody's house and your parents had no idea who they were? Oh, yeah. 
I'm over yeah. at Lauren's house, and my mom never met Lauren. My yeah. mom never met the parents. But Here's now, no, you've yeah. got to be introduced to the, oh, you know, yeah. the cousins, the uncle. You got to, you got to know everybody before anybody's and going anywhere. Be friends on Facebook. Oh my, yeah. yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to hear from you. What is something you did as a kid that kids just can't do today? Head over to the Houston Life TV Facebook page and join the conversation. We're going to share some of your comments a little bit later on in the show. Absolutely. Okay, we are continuing to celebrate Asian Pacific American heritage by preserving the rich culture of China through authentic dance. Joe Sam is in Chinatown getting a lesson at the DAA Academy. What's going on, Joe? So a lot's going on here, Lauren and Courtney. They're going to be getting ready to get into some of that in just a minute. But I'm going to be talking to the owner, Jamie, here, and the instructor, Yuri, to give us some information about the DAA Academy because you guys do some amazing things here with these beautiful yeah. traditional costumes really showcasing us that culture and tradition, correct? Absolutely, yes. We've been around for so many years. Um, we have 35-plus years of um, professional training experience for our dancers in ballet, modern jazz, Asian dance, Chinese dance, Korean Korean dance. Yes. So um, we're all over in the community with performances as well. Absolutely. And when we talk about the mixture of all of those different cultures of dance, how are you incorporating that within your lessons to all of the beautiful women here? Because as an immigrant by myself, and I was born in Korea, but I, I immigrated here. And then it's really awesome and joy month to teach them the culture of Asia and then inherit them and then to, to give them the true history or learn and all the dances. It Absolutely. was really enjoyable. Yes. I love the fact that you're doing this here. And when you're doing this, we already see all of the talent that they have. How, uh, what age do they start at before they are able to start doing all of what they're doing here? Because it's incredible. We have dancers that start at all different ages, but um, we start teaching here at the age of three all the way to adults. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, what's amazing what Yuri said is that not only do we give the Asian culture to them through the dances, but they, in turn, are the ambassadors while they bring it out to the audiences when they perform it. So Absolutely. it's really a community coming together. And everyone learns a little bit about the tradition and the heritage of Asian Chinese culture, all of the different cultures that you're mixing in here at the DAA Academy. Absolutely. Really, really great work that you're doing. And you know what? This is just some of the stretching. We thought stretching was just, you know, <laughs> reach up here, reach down here. They're just doing stretching right now. When we come back, they're going to actually perform for us and give us a special performance here at the DAA Academy. For right now, Courtney and Lauren, we're going to send things back to you. I'm going to go and try and see what I can do with these ladies, but I don't think I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't pull a hammy, Joe, whatever you did. I can't wait to see those dance moves, though, Joe. <laughs> Still ahead on Houston Life, a former Navy SEAL, Jack Carr, shares how his novel got turned into a new TV series starring Chris Pratt. And a family getaway that will have you enjoying a tropical paradise. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. For true Caribbean flavor and a laid-back feel, you definitely want to explore the island of St. Kitts. It's small enough to see in a day and big enough to explore for a lifetime. Here to tell us more about this great getaway is the CEO of St. Kitts Tourism, Raquel Brown. Welcome to Houston Life, Raquel. Hi, Courtney. How are you? Well, you know what? Thank All you. I needed to do was see that little bit of video, and I'm like, sign me up. When can I, can I go now? Because it looks amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about St. Kitts. You can definitely come now, for sure, for sure, for sure. Love it. Well, for the people that don't know, explain to us where St. Kitts is and what the island really has been like in the past year. Well, uh, St. Kitts is in the northern Leeward Islands. It's north in the eastern Caribbean. So if they're familiar with Antigua or St. Martin, we're just like 20 minutes each from those islands. Uh, we just reopened our borders. Uh, on October 31st. We've only had 44 COVID cases in total since COVID first broke out here on March 24th. Uh, we've been one of the stricter destinations, and I know some persons find that a little restrictive, but we only have 53,000 persons here on island. And so it has been a balancing act of trying to ensure that we make we make sure our nationals and residents are safe so that when visitors come, they're also safe. Uh, right now, we just released our protocols for vaccinated travelers. So they can actually come and stay on island for nine days, vacation in place at one of our beautiful resorts in Ibis 
nursing kits are Nevis. And the best thing about even just being in a resort for nine days here in St. Kitts and Nevis, it's just so laid back and relaxing that you probably will not want to go anywhere. And I would just say guarantee you will not want to go somewhere else. I love that. So once you're there, you don't have to worry about venturing off. Everything you need to do is right there. What right else there. is there to do on the island for those that, that want to venture? Well, those who maybe want to venture after nine days, they are free to go and do the scenic railway, which is the only passenger railway train left in the Caribbean island. It literally is a choo-choo train that takes you through the remnants of what used to be sugar plantations in current or present day life. So you will see the remnants of, you know, old windmills or old um, pipe stacks or pass through old estates. But you're really also passing through the day to day life with kids going to school, farmers, persons going to work, just everyday society. And that's still very unique to St. Kitts because we're the only Caribbean nation that has a choo-choo train that goes around the island and literally it has a conductor and it is a choo-choo train. We also have Caribel Batik, which is the only remaining batik art in St. Kitts and it's very unique art. Many persons try to duplicate it, but it was something that many of the English colonies had, but St. Kitts remains, um, it still remains in St. Kitts and you can actually go up to Thomas Jefferson's uh, great, great, great grandfather's land which is where Caribel Batik is and Romney Manor and then also there is Brimstone Hill which is a fortress that um, speaks to why we're English you can also go through the uh, the the rainforest, you can zip line, you can go on an AT bike, ATV bike, or you can actually go for a hike into a, a crater. It's dormant, um, but it's a volcano. We're a volcanic island, and so it really is an awesome experience to go into a crater, which should be on everybody's bucket list. Oh, I'm right there with you, Raquel, for sure. I know that you've talked about the COVID protocols and different things at the resort, all the things that we can do on the island. I know there's so many families now that uh, they're, they're starting to make their plans for summer vacations um, because with things opening up now, I'm guessing this is gonna be on the list. Let's talk about any specials that are happening. Yes, so we have a five day getaway program right now for persons who just want to get away. They've been vaccinated, they've been inside their homes, they want to get out. Uh, it's a promotion that started April 1 and it runs until September 5th, uh, up until the Labor Day weekend. And it's good for Park Hyatt, it's good for Four Seasons Hotel in Nevis, Montpelier Nevis, the Marriott Hotel here. And it involves bringing your family just to rejuvenate, relax, give the kids some time to do what they want to do so you can actually just have some downtime for yourself and basically the booking window is from we started April 1st and it ends July 31st so it gives persons quite a bit of time to make a decision uh, to make their bookings to come to St. Kitts they may think of an opportunity just before the kids go back to school for those who are up north uh, school starts in September a, a last minute vacation for those who really need to get away just come to St. Kitts it's not as hot as Houston or humid here we're very we have a nice trade wind so it really works well here. Summers here are much cooler than they are in Texas. Raquel Brown, thank you so much for the insight today at St. Kitts. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Courtney. Have a good day. You too. For more information or to cash in on any of those deals that you just heard Raquel talk about, for your family, just head to stkittstourism.kn or you can call 869-465-4040. All right, right now we are going to send things over to Lauren Kelly. Lauren, I'm going to book our trip, okay? Uh, I was going <laughs> to get on it if you did it, Courtney. <laughs> Coming up, the pop abilities are endless with a pop of literacy. A look inside their easy-to-use literacy-based sensory boxes that make learning easy for kids and parents. And we'll check in with Frank for a look at the heavy rain we're expecting. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life on this Monday. Courtney and Lauren, who's in for Derek today. Yes, ma'am. Great to see you just at 3.30 now. Yes, it's been a good day so far. Absolutely. Yeah, earlier we asked you guys, what's something you did as a kid that kids can't do today? And here is what you had to say. These are good. Let's start with Marte. <laughs> drink from a water hose. Yes. Spider webs and all. I, I mean, mean. Who didn't drink from a water hose? You made a good point during the commercial break. You said you had to let it run a little bit because it'd be scorching hot yes, in the summer. of course. Burn your tongue. <laughs> Lily writes in. 
I was the remote control for the family because I was the youngest. You know what that means? She had to get up to turn the channel. Now TVs have no buttons. They'll never know what it's like. No. I'm with you, Lily. <laughs> you can do it from your phone. Jacqueline says, went and played outside until it got dark. I was miles away from home with friends and creeks. Parents weren't worried. Now I don't like my kids to be out of my sight. So true. Mm -hmm. Jessica writes in, slamming the phone when you hang up on a call. You know what? This is so true. There is yes. something so satisfying about that. Now it's just pressing a button on your screen. That is so true. The other thing that was really satisfying were the old flip phones. Oh, yeah. Because you got one. the but, anger out. But this, mm -mm. no, mm. doesn't work. I'm oh. with I'm with all of them there. <laughs> I talked about riding in the back of that. I don't know what that space is in the back of the car. I don't know. I would lay down. I'm yeah. small. I would. It was the package what? tray. Package oh, tray. Okay. That's what it was called. That's official what word tried. from Jason. Okay. Well, I bet Frank has something to add to this. We're going to check in with him now for a look. I know this afternoon we're looking at a wet forecast, Frank. But as we drift down memory lane, anything you did as a kid that we would never do today? I would love to lay in a beanbag chair, but I don't think I could find one. Oh, oh we a can get you one. Chair? Yeah. I, I go, couldn't get up. That's my bare, problem. I used to go barefoot in the creeks, you know, around. Yes. Home. And just bare, just take my shoes off and go barefooted. Yeah, until I cut myself, and that was that. So. You know, yeah. the other thing is, too, all the pesticides we consumed oh, as right. children. <laughs> the laundry list. <laughs> oh, remember riding your bike behind the uh, mosquito sprayer? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <gasps> All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. Okay, speaking <laughs> the good of water hose, I got to get serious <laughs> about this weather, y'all. Yes. We've got a bunch of flood stuff to talk about. First of all, this just came down on Click to Pins from Kingwood. So send me all your Click to Pins, your videos, and your still shots so I can share them and show what people are going through. There are flood warnings uh, in that area already. Flood watches through Thursday morning for all of Southeast Texas. So we're under a watch through almost the end of the week. These are in effect right now. There's the flash flood warning until 6 30 that includes the Kingwood area. You can see basically from from I-10 up to Montgomery County across through Chambers and Liberty. Then we go north to Liberty, a flash flood warning until 515. Go over here to the east and north. We have an aerial flood advisory until 515 Conroe to Huntsville and then south into Harris County and Sealy, an aerial flood advisory until 6 p.m. That is to say there is flooding going on where we see these red boxes. We're expecting flooding to occur where we see these green boxes. So you may not have it yet, but you got to be very careful out there. Look at all of these strong storms that continue to move southeast at about 30, 35 miles an hour. So they're on the move, but not moving fast enough because there's just so much of it. There's all of this rain that's going to continue to push through over the next couple of hours. There's a little wider view. It stretches from San Antonio all the way here to Lake Charles, where they have had rainfall amounts in the Beaumont area. They're actually under a flash flood emergency right there on I-10. A foot of rain easily, and this is just the last 12 hours. So they're already looking at that with the population there along that part of I-10, about 5,000 people, four schools being affected. So they're watching that. These, as you know, we are in a partnership with Harris County Flood Control District, and these are live rainfall amounts that we are getting from Harris County Flood Control as we speak. So in two inches, you see that orange at a moderate level. That's a moderate chance of street flooding. The red, 3.6 inches, a high chance of street flooding. That goes to purple here, 4.6 inches of rain in just one hour. Almost five inches of rain in one hour here at Cedar Bayou and FM 1960. So street flooding in this part of Harris County is assured. That is an extreme risk and a high risk up to the north. Loose Bayou and FM 2100, 1.4, almost 1.5 inches of rain in the last hour. You get two inches of rain in an hour, that's where you start to have problems. You get five inches of rain, you have big problems. So watch out there in the Kingwood area. You can see 1.7, 1.9. So we're right at two inches around the Conroe area, Panther Branch and Alden Branch a low risk, but that can go up pretty quickly. And if you look back out here to 2.1 at Three Mile Creek and Joseph Road, that's a moderate chance of uh, street flooding. Again, that's 2.1 inches of rain in just the last hour. So we've got these issues. The, the I guess the upside of this so far is if you look at the live view of the bayou and stream status, red is flooding likely, yellow is flooding possible, green is not flooding, and we've got all green right now. That's going to change as we go through the week. May not change today, but it will change because this low is sitting out there, this high is sitting here, and the two together are going to continue to bring in these chances of rain all the way through Thursday. Heavy rain till then. I've got as much as 16 to 20 inches as possible. I'm going to show you the European and the American models coming up at 4 o'clock, and we'll compare them. And a lot of these models say 8 to 10. I think you can double that uh, with the warm tropical air that we have very often, 16 to 20. They've already had a foot out toward Beaumont. So 16 to 20 is not that big of a stretch. And then we'll talk, obviously, about when we dry out. 
I'll tell you what, Courtney Lauren, it's tough stuff. It's what we've been through. I'll tell you, that synoptic set up that low right. and that high, same thing from Memorial Day, same thing from tax day. Okay. It's very similar. It's just a matter of exactly when and where. Mm -hmm. But the what we know, the okay. what is going to be flooding rains. Well, as you always say, we don't know until we know. Yep. I know you're on top of it, Frank. Thank you so much. In the next couple of days, we'll be watching your reports. Turn around, don't drown. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks, Frank. Getting your kids to do any type of learning over the summertime can be, well, challenging. <laughs> but these teachers, mamas, and friends have come up with a great solution. A pop of literacy is a literacy-based sensory box that makes kids' learning fun for kids and easy for parents. Take a look. Uh, Papa Literacy is an educational literacy-based sensory box company. Um, we created this um, last year and it started during quarantine last summer we all met we all, were all three teachers we all have young ones and we kind of were just like what do we do like they were zooming a few times a week at school but they we just wanted more we put together it's um, a literacy based sensory box uh, supplies that come with it a book that comes with it and then a guide a grown-up guide that has activities that go along with the book that go along with the supplies we provide. It's such a great idea for kids over the summer. I feel like they start learning and continue learning without even knowing that they're still learning, right? Right. We love that aspect of learning through play. In the summer when it's nice and hot and you're looking for activities, they are perfect for playing, but also continuing your education and they have all kinds of activities from um, literacy, like Ali was saying, and phonemic awareness, learning syllables and rhyming, there's math activities, and they're all connected to the book. And they all are things you can do within your box. So you don't need anything. We provide everything for you. We make it really easy. We know parents want to help their kids and they just don't always know how or what they need. And so we make it super simple for you. You just need the box and you can get going and playing right away. Julie, I want you to tell our viewers, you know, what, what you really want them to take away from jumping into one of your boxes. So we like to say that we make the books pop. Um, we really like to bring the books to life. So, you know, I find that I read the book one time to my daughter and then I'll kind of be in the other room. She'll be playing with her pop box and she'll be retelling the story completely on her own. Or I'll jump in and we'll go through and reread the book together while she acts it out with the pieces. So like the other two previously said, there's so many possibilities for in independent play or for play together. Um, we really just want to make it easy for parents. We felt as teachers and educators, we have so much knowledge that we just wanted to share. And um, all the materials are ready for you down to the glue for the art project. I think this is a great idea. And thanks for sharing all your information. Happy summer. Thank you. Let me tell you something. I know these ladies well, and what's best about these pop boxes is the fact that your kids will not even know that they're learning because it seems the like best. they're playing. All the info on how to get one is online at HoustonLife.tv. It's really cool, too, that it's in the box. So it's like, clean up, put the exactly. lid on, and you're done. Let's play. Let's open it up. I love yeah. it. Great idea, yeah. Lauren. All right, still to come, we'll be checking back in with Joe Sam, who's experiencing the Asian culture through dance. Ooh, plus, he's a former Navy SEAL penning heart-pounding political thrillers meet author Jack Carr when Houston Life returns. Hey. Well, welcome back. After spending time overseas as a U.S. Navy SEAL, Jack Carr became a hit writer with the release of the political thriller The Terminal List and the start of a series getting adapted by Amazon Prime. So awesome. Carr joins us now to share details on his fourth book, The Devil's Hand, and his rise to literary stardom. Jack, how's it going today? It's going great. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You know, Courtney and I joked, we said that you look like you're actually lumberjack in your log cabin with your tomahawks and your, your wood behind you. Let's talk a little bit about your amazing 20-year service. 
Well, it was a it was a good run, that's for sure. Uh, September 11th happened uh, two weeks into my second deployment. So uh, from then on, it was a full on sprint all the way through to the end. And I retired in 2016 with time in Iraq, time in Afghanistan, the Southern Philippines. Um, and what I didn't realize at the time uh, was that all those experiences, not exactly what happened, but the feelings and emotions behind those different experiences would find their way into the novel. So when people are reading it, uh, I didn't have to interview someone one that was a sniper in Ramadi in 2006 uh, and then have whatever they have with their answer fil put through whatever filters I may have had uh, through my life experience that sort of thing if I was just interviewing them but uh, with having that experience I can just think back on what it was like and then apply those feelings and emotions to a completely fictional narrative so if it reads like it's authentic and real that's because the feelings and emotions come from a real place well Jack first of all thank you so much for your 20 year service you are obviously part of a very elite group being part of the U.S. Navy SEAL team. Um, you're, the way that you would describe the way that you write and taking these, uh, you know, feelings and emotions that you've had over the 20 years, I think it, it probably stems a little bit from your mom. Your mom was a librarian, right? I mean, that's where your love of writing kind of started as a child. That's right. So I grew up surrounded by books and this love of reading and uh, both of my parents made it very natural. So just as natural as anything else we did, it was now time to read. It wasn't like we were we were forced to do it or bribed to do it. It was just uh, something that that we did. So uh, my mom would take any opportunity that she had to take us out of the local library to do research if we expressed interest in anything, because, of course, back then there's no Internet. So we can't just Google it. <laughs> so we actually have to physically put in the work, go to the library, look these things up. And back then there was hardly any, any information out there about Navy SEALs. There was right. a few references here and there in a couple books and magazine articles and newspaper uh, uh, stories and things like that, but there wasn't a, an unending supply of information like there is today. So when I found out what SEALs were when I was seven, we went down there and did that research and I knew the path that I was on. Um, but following along with that, a lot of the information that I got came from fictional sources. So uh, they came from these thrillers from guys like Tom Clancy and Nelson DeMille and David Morrell and Stephen Hunter, AJ Quinnell, JC Pollock, all these guys in the 80s whose protagonists, whose main characters had backgrounds that I wanted in real life one day. So I started reading all these thrillers starting in about the fifth grade. And I knew that after my time in the military, then I'd write the same kind of thrillers that I was enjoying growing up. It's almost like you have these characters in your mind and you have a little bit of experience with each one of them. And then you get to put on paper how your adaptation is and speaking of Hollywood adaptation we got to talk about the big name attached to it Chris Pratt how did he get involved yeah, this was crazy because I started writing this as I was nearing the time uh, I was getting close to my time to get out of the military and started writing. And at the time, Chris Pratt had just played uh, on Parks and Rec, so not necessarily an action hero type person <laughs> that you would think of playing your character like this. Uh, and he had a very small role in Zero Dark Thirty about the Bin Laden raid. And I thought, you know what? This is a guy that could take on this role. He hasn't done one like this yet. As an actor, he needs to take that risk. I'm taking a risk with my family in this next chapter in life, putting everything in to this novel and uh, I think he's the guy and then before the first novel even came out I got a call from a friend of mine uh, that I was in the SEAL teams with and he called me and he said I wanted to always thank you for what you did for me in the SEAL teams and I couldn't remember what it was but he said you helped me with transition you sat me down in your office you introduced me to people in the private sector no one else did that I always wanted to thank you and I said, no problem. And he said, I heard you have a book coming out. And I said, yeah, I have a rough copy I can send you. And uh, he said, well, I'd like to give it to a friend of mine. And I said, well, who's that? And he said, Chris Pratt. So <laughs> oh. he gave it to Chris. Chris read it. And about a couple weeks later, Chris calls me and wants to uh, option it for a film. So uh, off we go to the races. And cool it's sentence, great. right, Courtney? Chris Pratt called me the other day. Hey, who knew? <laughs> uh, we're looking it's at... It's fantastic. It could not be nicer. This could not be in uh, in better hands. Because there's a lot of trust that happens when you right, hand right. your manuscript over to someone to adapt it to film. And uh, him and Antoine Fuqua, it could not be in better hands. It's really great. We're so excited for it. And we're looking at the premiere uh, next year. Is that right? I think so, sometime in 2022. Oh, cannot wait. Okay, so we've got that. Let's talk about the new book, The Devil's Hand. Yeah, so each book has a distinctly different theme, and I, that helps me as I sit down.
guide where the rest of the story goes. And the first one, the terminal list, is really all about revenge without constraint. Second one, true believers, a story of redemption and learning to live again, finding that next mission and passion in life. Uh, the third one, Savage Son, is really a tribute to the most dangerous game, which is a short story I read back in sixth grade by Richard Connell. And uh, it just it goes into the, the dark side of man through the dynamic of hunter and hunted. And this fourth one, I really wanted to explore something I thought about a lot while I was in the SEAL teams and what I continue to think about today as an author and as a citizen, which is what does the enemy learn by watching us on the field of battle for what is close to 20 years now? What lessons have they taken, incorporated into future battle plans? And in this case, in the case of the devil's hand, uh, they use that knowledge to strike again. So uh, I put myself in the enemy's shoes for a good year and a half as I was researching and writing this novel. So wonderful. What a great story. Again, Jack Hart, thank you so much for your service. The Devil's Hand is available wherever books are sold. And if you want to get your hands onto an autographed copy, you can find them locally at Murder by the Book. Thank you again. Great interview. And I need to get those two copies that they were he was talking about. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, now let's check in with Joe Sam, who is learning more about Asian dance traditions. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. I'm trying to learn a good bit because I, the ladies here are just outdoing me right now. We're, we've been trying to learn all day. We're getting these turns right. They're, they're you know, of course, doing a great job at it. I still have a lot of learning left to do, but when we come back, we're going to be checking out a really cool performance. Check them out there. When we come back here on Houston Life, make sure you guys stay tuned. Welcome back here to Houston Life. We're learning more about Asian Pacific American heritage, and we're doing so at the DAA Academy Dance of Asian America. And we're going to be talking more to the owner here, Janie, and also Miss Michelle here, who's another instructor. They're getting ready to do a special performance for us, right? Yep, absolutely. Oh, this is going to be so fun. When we talk about getting ready to perform, how can people actually come and check you guys out? Well, um, you know, give us a call. Look us up, da danceaa dot org, danceaa dot org, and um, you know, give us a call. We have classes for all ages, three to adult. We have ballet, modern jazz, Chinese dance, oh, Korean yeah. dance. Check us out. Oh yeah, we we're going to check that out, and we're going to get the music queued up right now. As I talk to the instructor here, we want to start to see that performance right now. They're going to be getting ready to perform, and you also instruct all of the dancers here as well. Talk about your instruction. Let's get that music queued up right now, though. Yeah, I'm here to teach their ballet, modern, and jazz pieces of their curriculum. They are incredible. They come here and work hard five days a week. It's amazing what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. It really is, and we're going to see how amazing that is right now. So let's go ahead and see the dancers give us that special performance here at the DAA Academy. Ladies, take it away. <laughs> As you can see, you guys, just an amazing performance that you're seeing here at the DAA Academy. A lot of great things are going to be happening here, and you can get participating in this as well. We're going to have all that information up on our website, HoustonLife.tv, to see more of these beautiful dances here and just incorporating all the culture. Now, go ahead, give these ladies a round of applause. Amazing job here. Courtney, Lauren, they are just doing some beautiful work and the skills and talent. I mean, come on now. Absolutely amazing, ladies. It was a beautiful <laughs> showcase for sure. Mm -hmm. Joe, thank you so much. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a TikTok trend that will mm. help you clean house. <laughs> mm. Oh, does that mean someone's cleaning it for okay, me? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what is coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Lauren and Courtney, make sure you tune into ET tonight for our Gordon Ramsay exclusive. He's taking us behind the scenes of his show Uncharted and grilling me like only Gordon can. That's tonight at 630 right here on KPRC2. But don't move. Houston Life will be right back.
Tomorrow on Houston Life, how a local mom survived a stroke and what she's doing now to help others avoid a similar health scare. And get the 411 on laundry stripping, a deep cleaning technique that's all the rage on TikTok and is said to get rid of residue that may not be removed by washing machines. I have so many questions. So laundry stripping? I, is that the right word? I don't know. Might have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, another reminder that for many tax day ends today, but for Texans who were affected by the winter storms, you do have until June 15th to file. That's right. Okay, all the details are in a full article on Click to Houston right now with all the deadlines and details that you need to know. Well, this was super fun on this Monday, Lauren Kelly. So fun. You're the bright pink sunshine that I needed today, Courtney. You're my leopard neutral. <laughs> I wore it just for you. <laughs> Would have been good if I was wearing it too. Texo, it's always good to see you. Yes. And that's going to do it for us on this Monday. We're going to toss it over now to Keith and Christine for the news at four. Hey guys, happy Monday.